Shaddai Eleyon Adonai You are God You are Yahweh The one who sits in the heavens There is none There is none like you Yahweh Yahweh There is none There is none like you You are God You are God Hele mosi arabo sanaya There is no there is no like you Em varoshi avale kambare davale There is no there is no like you Ia ko vaina no sanaya There is no there is no like you You are God there is no there is no like you You are the beginning and the end there is no there is no like you You are alpha and omega there is no there is no like the eternal, the immortal, the invisible. There is no, there is no like you. You are the one who says yes, and no one can there say no. Is no. There is no like you are the one who declares a thing and is established forever. There is no, there is no like you. Just bask in this presence. For there is none, there is no like you. There is none like him. There, there is, is no. None, there is none like you. Somebody came in here, and things seems to always work out for you. It always seems to work out. You have the deal. You are always close to that breakthrough. Then something happens and just stops it and just stops it I mean you it's just the end I mean they tell you come and take that paper and then you get there and then they turn it all around it seems like it's a moment to that breakthrough and then things just turn around again I saw you close to CCM this morning and that devil that keeps stopping that miracle that keeps stopping you from getting there. I stand on the name of Jesus and I hold it bound and I say, Caesar, no longer are you permitted to operate in that life. I curse you from the root now and I cast you out now in the name of Jesus. I declare it's your time of breakthrough. I declare that thing get into your hand that thing get into your hand you don't lose it when you are close to it that thing get into your hand everything stopping it is removed in the name of jesus so on for the past one week you have been wetting your bed with tears tears days are going your life is not changing and you are saying how long how long how long how long before the day breaks how long before the breakthrough happens how long before i see a new order of divine elevation i've come to announce to you today that this morning things turn around for you in the name of jesus i declare no more shits crying no more tears you've been going slowly 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 I see a hand just take you and take you to the place called there. A hand from heaven, it just lifts you and just take you to that place. He's saying, I'm not going to do speed. You don't need speed now. What God is doing is that he's taking you from that place and he's just transporting you by divine hand and grace to the place you want to be. If that is you, will you lift up your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, worship him. There is no there is no like you. There is no, 
there is none. I see a family, let's say pattern in that family. Let's say pattern. There's a pattern in that family. Sometimes you try to deny it, but there's a pattern. A pattern of delay. A pattern of delay in a particular area. The Lord said to tell you that that chain is broken. That that chain is broken. I see a hand come from heaven and shatter it. And that is you in the name of Jesus. That is you in the name of Jesus. There is no, there is no love. So the king guitar now. There is no, there is no love. You are Yahweh. Hey, you are Yahweh. Imano sembale kainamo. battle of words somebody told you that we'll see the end of you we'll see how it will end they, they release that word into your life and you have been thinking and dwelling on that word because every time you move you remember that that word has been sown and the spirit that follows words has followed that word I've come to announce by the power of the greater spirits I've come to announce by the power of the greater word that no longer that word no longer prevails in your life in the name of jesus who is he that speaks and it comes to pass when the lord of hosts ordained it not by the power of the name of jesus by the victory of calvary i announce a new world season for you and that word is that you win that word is that you are victorious that word is that you conquer in the name of jesus Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name and amen. amen. Can we go very quickly? I still have my time limited before me, and I'm still going to share within that time what the Lord will have us see and know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know you are here. You don't know. I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit, yeah, I know you are here, yeah. I know you are here. Precious Holy Ghost. Precious Holy Spirit. Yeah, I know. 
Sunday. I know you are here. You are here to bring revival. I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit. First Corinthians chapter two, and then we read verses nine to eleven. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. And the word of our Lord says, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. But as it is written, I has not seen nor hear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Very quickly, let's see Romans chapter 8 verse 14. I believe you know Romans chapter 8 verse 14. If you know it, can you read it? Sometimes when I see the response is so much, I, I normally just know that somebody has reviewed my truth right there, right? Uh, for as many as are led by what? So that means the Spirit leads, right? So as many as are led by Him, they are the sons of God. Welcome to church this cold morning and this raining morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you cold? All right. If you are, in, you are cold, brother, find a brother to hug by your side. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I thought the ladies would say they are cold, but they ain't cold. Glory to God. Help me look at your neighbor and say, welcome to church this morning. God has a word for you this morning. I'm speaking to this morning on understanding prophecies and divine guidance. Understanding prophecies and divine guidance. See what I sent there? My eyes was um, somehow. So don't worry. Don't worry about what's on the screen. Look at what I said and listen to what I said. Understanding prophecies uh, and divine guidance. Shall we pray? Father, thank you because the entrance of your word gives understanding, give light unto the simple. As simple people, we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, Lord. And Lord, I rightly distill your word upon the spirit of your people. After now that they make us better people, let the purpose for sending your word be fulfilled. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, and amen. Understanding prophecies and divine guidance. You can have your seat even in God's presence. Understanding prophecies and divine guidance. All right? Help me look at your neighbor and say, it is time. I preach it like you mean it. Preach it like the honorarium is in dollars. Look at that person and say, it is time. It is time to understand prophecies. Prophecies. Uh, let, let me begin here. Now, you, you are done. I want to preach now. Listen, okay. All right. Let, let me begin by, by saying that all that proceeds from God is good. All that proceeds from God is good. First John 1 and then verse 5. The Bible says a name is light and there is no darkness at all. All that proceeds from God, whatever it is, uh, is good. God does not have anything evil that proceeds from him. No, no, nothing negative, uh, nothing terrible proceeds from God. The Bible says in James chapter 1 and then verse 17, the Bible says um, every good gift, every perfect gift come from above, uh, from the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow, of turning it means uh, it doesn't turn like shifting shadows our god is a good god and only good uh, and only awesome things uh, proceeds from god and uh, when i say that i want to relate that to what we call prophecy 
listening to this uh, prophecy, uh, when we say every good gift comes from God, it means that terrible bad things that you have come to know about prophecies are not from God. Um, can I say that to you again? Uh, prophecies, prophets, uh, and everything evil you think that comes from that office or that giftings or that expression of that gift uh, that is terrible does not come from God, right? Prophecy is actually... So let me begin by making this statement. Uh, that prophecy is God's way. Prophecy is God's way. That prophecy is God's will. Uh, prophecy is God's idea. Prophecy is God's design. If you want to write that down, I think it's a good thing to write down. That prophecy is God's will, prophecy is God's way, prophecy is God's idea, prophecy is God's design. Prophecy is God's way, is God's will, is God's idea, is God's design. Um, so everything that you know about that ministry gift uh, or, the, uh, or the manifestation of that gift of the Spirit, uh, everything you know about prophecy uh, according as is given by the Holy Spirit is actually the idea of God, is the design of God. Listen to this, the devil is the originator of nothing. He does not have anything that comes from him except that which he has corrupted. So when you say the devil is wise, we are talking about the corrupted wisdom of this world, right? If you say the devil can see tomorrow, we are talking about the corrupted wisdom or the corrupted prophecy. So you go to meetings and then somebody is giving prophecy and you know that this person is probably not born again, right? And then you are asking yourself, how is he able to do that? I, there are people now that people have found a name for them. I, I grew up and I never had that name, but now I had that name now. I think in Yoruba land they call them Isheshe worshippers or something. I've never, yeah, it's just recently I knew that, okay, so there is Isheshe, they call them. But whatever it is, they call them. Uh, I don't know whether you have met people who sometimes wear white and all of that, and then they go around markets uh, and then they begin to say they are giving prophecies. Uh, that means they are telling you what was going to happen, right? And you see people kneel down or people stop and listen to them. Sometimes some old man that you know is not born again comes to you and walk up to you and say, I see that something about your tomorrow and blah, blah, blah. And say, come and cook rice, 20 packs, and then give it to beggars on the road. And they say, oh my God, that, it just gave me a prophecy, right? So you are asking yourself, those people that have those contents, are they of God or are they of the devil? You know they are not born again. But what they are saying, Sometimes if you don't do what they say, you actually see what they say you are going to see if you don't do it. That means that their false prophecy or whatever you call it, uh, uh, whatever they say will actually come to pass if you don't do it because they told you. So many times, many of us, especially those of us who are um, millennials, um, how many of us are millennials? Even Gen Z's, we say they are millennials. I mean, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> all right, so how many of us are Gen Z's? <laughs> so, 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 Gen Z's are not in my, in our church. That's amazing. I don't believe that. I don't believe it, you know, but they don't know what I want to say, right? So, millennials in this, this house, and then how many of us are older than millennials, right? Which one is before millennials? Baby boomers, okay. How many baby boomers do we have here? Okay, so, all right. But you have experiences that I want to share with you and talk about. How many of us have been in churches where they prophesy? Sometimes we call them spirit churches, um, where they prophesy and then they say things. And because of what they have said, you have, sworn, you have sworn by God, by devil, by everything that you will never enter a church, that they prophesy again. Raise your hand. You've sworn, I will never. Because the, even before we just say, ah, hallelujah, say there's somebody here, and they start prophesying. We don't even hear the word, they just start prophesying. And the things they have prophesied have destroyed many lives, and you are not interested. You have sworn that it will never happen. Listen, these experiences and these things we've seen have caused many scattered and broken homes. Is that not so? We've seen homes that are scattered because of prophecy, we've seen fearful and awful parents. Uh, because of prophecy we've seen life destroyed and businesses destroyed because of prophecy and then finally we have seen angry and lost children children who have not sworn they will never attend a spirit church but they have sworn that they will never enter any kind of church they will never because of their experiences i mean my father and my mother were doing well until we went to this particular church and they prophesied that my mom is a witch praise god and they told my father to do all his as in his power 
to get out of that. I, I want to start by talking about certain false prophecies and prophets. Praise God. I think it's a good place to start. There's a man, a theologian that is quite popular by his name. His name is John, pa- John Piper. John Piper, uh, he was married, is, was married to a woman called Noel. Are you following my story? A woman called Noel. And the, the, the woman was pregnant with their fourth children. Fourth child, sorry. Sorry, I don't speak. With their fourth child, right? And um, so a prophet, a woman came and met John Piper. And said to John Piper, your wife is pregnant with a baby girl. And she's going to die. And the baby is also going to die during delivery. That was the prophecy. And they told John Piper that. John Papa did not tell Noel. Noel didn't say anything to his wife. Eventually, they gave birth to that child. The child was a boy. Praise God. Not even a girl. Right? And um, she did, he didn't do anything. He never said anything to the, ma- to the wife about it. Now, that is a kind of prophecy, right? Um, some of these prophecies, you've got to say it to give them power. You've got to believe it in order to give it power. All right, let me give you another one. So, recently, my parents were reminding me of a certain prophecy that we received, that somebody received. So a man was married, and um, his wife, just like John Piper, his wife also was pregnant, right? And uh, this man was a man of God, a pastor, but his life was not progressing. You know, if your life don't progress, that's what pushes many, push many people to prophecies and spirit churches, right? Because of lack of progress. Uh, is somebody following because of lack of progress? So um, there was no progress. So they went to this particular church. I, I know the church. I know the man. I know the wife. And so they got to this church, and then the, the woman of the church, who was the prophetess and the G.O. of the church, um, said that, that that woman is the witch. And that woman is the problem for the man. That's why the man was not progressing. That's what the Spirit of the Lord has said. The Spirit that revealed that that woman is a possessed woman. And what the man needed to do was that the man needed to go and pray. So the man went on a mountain. Are you following me? Went on a mountain to pray. Now, I, I, I skipped an information, which is that the woman was pregnant. Right? So the man went on the mountain to pray. And the prayer point was that he should pray that the child, that the woman will die with the child. True life story. So the man went on the mountain and prayed. I uh, prayed, spent about seven days on the top of Babalola Mountain. Praise the Lord. And um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Babalola Mountain. Is there something wrong with the people who send him there? Right? And the prayer point. And he prayed. I mean, how can you love your wife? And then you, had, you, you slept with your wife. Right? To know the kind of power that prophets and prophecies have over people. Right, and he went on that mountain and prayed. Uh, Lubra, Kasi, after seven days, he came down. Now, something happened. The woman delivered the baby, and the woman did not die. Praise God. You like that? Uh, praise God. He didn't die. But, but fast forward, um, they left the church. And um, after they left the church, the ministry of the man began to pick up. Right? He, he was a pastor. He was not supposed to be in that church in the first place. So he started his own ministry again. He restarted his ministry, and the thing was doing so well. Fast forward many years after, about two, three years after, the woman was pregnant again. Praise the Lord. And because the woman was pregnant again, um, they, they kept doing what they were doing. But this time around, in the point and the place of delivery, the baby and the woman died. True life story. Now, when my dad finished telling me, reminding me of the story, I asked them a simple question. Who killed the baby? Uh, who killed the baby? Was it God? It looked like answer to the prayer he had prayed before. But many times we do not understand that the prophetic is a place that is very spiritual. Therefore, when you open certain doors and you refuse to close it, those doors will permanently remain open. Perhaps he had been spiritually wise and perceptive, he would have known that he was supposed to have gone and pray and close that door so that the devil will not be able to take advantage of what he had mentioned and prayed about. Therefore, prophecies scatter, destroy lives. I mean, let's even look at the rationale behind that. How would you actually go and pray? I don't care whether they said your wife has seven arms and then he does not only fly. He actually flies and swims. Whatever will make you to now go to a mountain and go and kill. We need to start explaining our doctrines again. Are we assassins or we are lovers of people? 
You know, the way some people pray, they are, they are actually spiritual assassins, right? Because I go on the mountain, the woman I have slept with, the woman I proclaim love to, uh, but because somebody had prophesied or revealed to me that that woman is becoming the enemy. And some of you are looking at me, you know what I'm talking about? Because those are the kind of prophecies they have given you to scatter homes. You know about it, they didn't probably give your parent, but you know somebody they gave it to. And some people have stopped going to church because they believe that the church is because just have become a place where fraudulent people exist, where we just say things that are not. So when I got married and I married my wife, one of the things my wife never really want to hear about is prophecy or prophets, right? So let's just teach the word, let's just look at the word, and let's do what the word says. How many of you here are like that? You just want the word. Let's just teach the word and go home. Whatever I can find in scriptures, I go away with it. And many times what we do, therefore, is that we throw away the water with the baby and the um, and everything inside of it. Therefore, there is nothing actually wrong with prophecy. There is nothing wrong with prophets. There is absolutely something wrong with people who take advantage of people or who allow themselves to be manipulated that they may give prophecies that the Lord did not speak about. And that is in every ministry office. You know, we talk about prophecy, and that's very fantastic. That's very cool. But many times we also forget that there are also false teachers. Why do we always pick up on prophets and prophecies? Uh, I mean, there are teachers also. Um, you can go and read about some of them. You, even if you type online now and say, the greatest domestic violence that has claimed many lives in the U.S., uh, the greatest one would be something done by a teacher who actually just preaches people that is the new Messiah. He started a Pentecostal praying in tongues. And then one day, he actually made all of them to drink poison in his church. They were more than 900. And they drank poison and died. True life story. There are people who also teach that Jesus did not come in the flesh. There are people who teach that Jesus did not come in the flesh. They deny the virgin birth. Heretic teachers, that's what we call them. I would not give you the names of some people. I would have said you should Google them. Uh, but when I talk about people in not a very bad way, I, I don't mention their names uh, so that it's not the way love works. There are also teachers who are charlatans. Right? Charlatans. Charlatans like Simon Magus. I just mentioned one name. But it's in your Bible. Acts chapter 8. Simon went and he wanted to purchase the gift of the Spirit by paying money. He wanted to do that by paying money. That's Simon. But it is not only people like Simon that we talk about. Since that time, charlatan has appeared on the pulpit teaching and preaching and using the gospel as a means of ad financial advancement. And we can lie to ourselves. But there are people all over cities who the reason people don't want to go to church is because they have become charlatans. You have nothing you are doing. I mean, I don't know how people will carry strugglers. When I mean strugglers, I mean market women. People who all they have, all their business is worth is probably 50,000. And you are taking 20 offering. Understand that? And the pastor is using a best. That, I mean, you, you, you just know that these are people who are just charlatans. And we don't talk about them in church. In fact, as I'm saying this, some of you have names coming to your mind and, and all of that. You remember that brother in your village, that uncle in the east, all those people, you know, they are just in the east, in the south, in the west, in northern Nigeria, before they say I'm only talking about the east. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, you know, since time immemorial, these charlatans have existed. Um, you might not have heard, if you do church history, you would have heard of somebody called Pope Leo Te. Now, something, he, he is famous for something. He was the one that commissioned Tetzel to begin to sell what you call indulgence. And what is indulgence? What's an indulgence? Catholic people will know about indulgence. What's an indulgence? It's something you sell um, to somebody who had died, and then you, you, if, you, if your father died, your mom died, and you know they are going to hell, you just come and buy an indulgence. So when you buy an indulgence, it is, we will now pray, it will change them from hell and put them in heaven. Praise the Lord. You love that? You love that? You know, if, if, if that were true from gospel, then we all live our life and that. And all I need to do is to keep a lot of money in shares and stocks and say, son, daughter, when I die, pay that priest and then they don't, don't move me. 
I'm a, as they say, hell now, you are going to hell. They just pay the indulgence. You don't, poof, you change where you are going and you start going to hell. That's how ridiculous that doctrine was. But Pope Leo said, that's what he did. That's what he did. He sent that guy to go and sell indulgence. And that was one of the things that Martin Luther fought for. What you call the Reformation. That's where he started in Germany. And the main gist of that reformation was, listen, men are saved by belief in the righteousness of God, and that's it alone. It's just, just believe in Christ, and that's what righteousness is about. You see, when he commissioned Ted Sell to sell indulgences, the prophet not only funded the reconstruction of St. Peter's Basilica, which was a church building, they were building that time in Rome, he didn't only fund it, it also fund his luxurious lifestyle. You see that? It's easy for me to prophesy. And say, you know what, to get forward, the Lord of heaven has asked for the sacrifice. And the sacrifice for you to get forward is for you, I, I see number seven, 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 seven. And the Lord has told me that that seven is all your income for seven months, you sacrifice it. Are you following what I'm saying? And as, the, as you sacrifice that, you pay it. I don't need your money. Just look at me. What do I want to use your money for? That's like it's psychology. You understand what I'm saying? So you say, I don't need your money. Look the way. <laughs> and as I'm, I'm speaking, I'm saying, you know, when I bought the Ferragamo shoe that I was wearing, uh, I just use all of that to let you understand I'm comfortable financially. But it's not, it's not true. You understand what I'm saying? And so I, I then prophesy and I assure that you give me that seven month salary. And then I get seven months from seven people. Or I say, there are seven people here. Now listen to what I said. Listen, listen, listen. The Spirit just told me now, seven people here for your breakthrough seven times. Eluva hahuni akaba. Yanano redidi aroba kiadaba. Stand, 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 stand. I see T. I see F. T is Tony. Stand up. Oh, F. So stand up. And then people stand. And then I begin to say, I know of a prophet in the city of Valori. That a man went, a woman went to pray. And the Lord said to that prophet that the woman should not go with her car because the car has become a coffin. Praise the Lord. And so the man collected the car because it has become a coffin. But the man of God can live in the coffin. I, mean, I praise the Lord. <laughs> Are you seeing what I'm saying? And so they took, the man, the woman now went, went, went home with leg. And the man, the woman married a man like me. You know what that means? He married a man like me. He jumped Married a man like me. The man did not do anything. He just went to the police station. <laughs> and reported. He didn't even pray. He just went to the police. You know, it's not story. And they went, paid. You know when you pay police people to do work? He paid them. So when they got there, they first of all beat the prophet. And accused the prophet of stolen property. Why is, why is my car in your building? He said, ah, your wife doesn't move. Why is he here? My wife is at home. What is he doing here? No, you can hear things and tales like that. And because everywhere you check social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, news and news, you begin to doubt the essence of the prophecy. Allow me to say to you that the devil is not an originator of anything. He only has a way of disrupting and destroying what God has produced. Many times you and I live a life of no direction because we will not listen to prophecies. We will not. It's not because they are bad, but it's because our experiences are not good. So, let me start by, I'm starting now. What is prophecy? Is that fine? Let, let's look at what is prophecy. Prophecy is God speaking his mind, his heart, and his intentions to a believer or the church through a believer as revealed by the Holy Spirit. Is God speaking his mind? That's prophecy. Is God speaking his mind, his heart, his intentions to a believer or a church? And that way he's going to speak, he's going to speak through a believer who is also receiving that information through the Holy Spirit. You see how it flows? So we have a word from God. God wants to speak to us as a church. He will speak through a believer. But that believer is not going to speak the mind of himself. He's speaking the mind of God. But how does he receive the mind of God? By the help of the Holy Spirit. So that what God has as his intention, as his mind, the Holy Spirit receives it. The Holy Spirit shares it with somebody 
and then that person releases that word to us. It therefore tells you that the first task and the first landmark of being a prophet or prophesying is the fact that you must be born again. If the person you are dealing with is not born again or you are not assured of whether he is saved, then don't listen to whatever he says. Because it is important the channel through which prophecy comes. It's important. If that person is not born again, you are not sure of his salvation experience, whatever he says, discard it. Discard it. Because prophecy is the spirit sharing the mind of God through a believer. So what is prophecy? Prophecy is the outflow of the art and the very nature of God. It's the outflow of the art of God to a person. The communication of the art of God to a person. To prophesy, therefore, is to speak the mind of the Lord. Uh, for the purpose of edification, of the purpose of exaltation, and for the purpose of comfort. That's according to 2 Corinthians chapter 14 and then verse 3. 2 Corinthians 14 and then verse 3. The testimony of Jesus is actually the spirit of prophecy. That's what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 19 and then verse 10. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That means that every prophecy will edify Christ. It is not a prophecy when you finish listening to the prophecy and you now believe that the devil is more powerful than God. Have you had prophecies that you won't be able to sleep? Ah. They share it with you. Night is falling. You say, I'm in trouble. Now, that is not uh, the testimony of Christ. If you are revealing to me what the devil wants to do, then you must also elevate Jesus because Jesus is for me the source of my victory. It's for me in the source of my winning. Do you understand what we're saying here? That, that's very key. Now, prophecy is the word of God that is usually addressed to the church about the things of God. For the testimony of Jesus, like I said to you, is the spirit of prophecy. Now, prophecies are real. Prophecies are real. Let, let me explain again. The prophetic words come through the mouth of man, but it comes from the mind of God. That is very key. Write that down. Prophes prophecy comes through the mouth of a man but it is actually an expression of the mind of god do you see that the prophetic words come through the mouth of man but it comes from the mind of god so it can prophesy to you and speak the mind of god and still speak bad english it doesn't mean it was god that is speaking bad english just what i'm saying he said he told me <laughs> when i go when I go, he will came. And so you are looking at can no, don't forget that it is his words. It is not God's word, really, at certain times. It is the mind of God is sharing, and so he cannot share much more than his grammar and his vocabulary. So that he is not sophisticated does not mean he cannot share the mind of God with you. You know, we have become a two generation. You you judge people by the address. I asked on social media yesterday that if somebody comes and asks you, I've got a word from God for you, what would you say? And I, I saw a lot of apprehensions. Some people say, I will hear sin, and then I will judge. Uh, somebody say, it depends on how he looks. It depends on how he looks. I, I, whether you say it is not so, it's not so. Many of you hear it depends on how the person looks. Aha. Uh -huh. Uti, stand. Uti, stand, stand, stand. Uti, come now. Are you afraid? Come here. Tony, please, come. Come. Uti, come. Beautiful. Stay, don't follow me now. Ah, stay like this. Come. It's you now, so you know. Be fast. Come and stay here. It depends. The vessel determines how we'll take it. Now, if these three people say they have a word from you, God from you, who would you say has the real word? It's dire that you say has the word. In fact, the person you will say does not have any word is Uti. Do you get what I'm saying now? What? Well, you say, ah. you say I, I, I've got it. God just spoke to me concerning you. You're like, <laughs> you know why? Because you look at the container. And at many times when we look at the container, we miss what God is saying. If it smells good, then you must know what God is saying. Yeah, it, it must be telling what God is saying. If it who's this? Uh, God cannot speak to that kind of vessel. Praise the Lord. But when, when, when the dialogue comes, you say, ah, I'm going to look at you, rebook, everything. Ah, say, green, green. Praise the Lord. 
Ah, no, you say, you say, you say, ah, uh, the Lord said to tell you. The person will say, oh. Oh, you see, you will not even know whether it's the spirit he believes or it's the mouth he believes. Or it's the container he believes, but there is a believing. You see what I'm saying? Many times what we do is that we judge God's word and what God wants to do with our life by the way the container, the vessel looks. And many times we miss out. You know, if John the Baptist was in our generation, no one would listen to him. Is, is a definition of an insane guy, right? Doesn't even eat good food. He can't, he can't eat shawarma. He can't, he can't eat all those things. I mean, he stayed in the bush. He doesn't even wear clothes. No more clothes. Praise God. No one wearing no more clothes. Don't think people are not wearing no more clothes. Then they were, but this guy just decided he's not going to do that because his calling is killing him. You know, people who carry call upon their life. The call is upon their life. They don't even cope their head. The call is upon their life. You understand? The call. People are dying. When people are perishing, I can't use perfume when people are perishing. <laughs> Praise God. Have you seen, guys? I, I'm just trying to say that, listen, it is how the container looks that we judge prophecy, but that is not supposed to be so. Prophecy is a spiritual gift given to Christians by the Holy Spirit. And the gift should strengthen believers and glorify Jesus. Glorify Jesus. You know, recently I was in Obomosho, and then I was chatting, I was having this talk with my brother, Reverend Tolu Agola, and we were just speaking about campuses, the state of the campus, and what the Lord will have me do about going back to the campus, which I always do before, just our programs and all of that. And, uh, and then Prophet, I'm, I'm mentioning him so that you can know, and then Prophet Ayojeje, who was sitting in the lobby, we, when pastors talk, we don't shout, right? We just, uh, and then so... Prophet Ayojeje was coming from the staircase and then he came and then we stood up, followed him. And then he was close to the guy. He just turned and looked at me. I said, I see Tog, Tog around you, Tog, Tog. Ah. You see, when they say they see Tog around you, you... it's not something you want to say that you see Tog around somebody. When I'm not, I don't look at the MCO Luomo. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so they say they, 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 they see Tog around me, see Tog. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, that's what you will think, but I know what it means. Because I used to hold a conference in school called Tog Invasion. That is true heroes under God. And then he said, I see talk, I see talk. Does it mean anything, man of God? And then I smile. Now, that is prophecy. It, we didn't see anything. And he said, I think the Lord will have you visit that again. That's what he said. And then he left. It's, it's reassuring because that was what we were talking about. And then he came. And he said that. So, you must understand that prophecies are very key. Just yesterday, I saw on Instagram, I, don't, I, I think I saw it on Friday, Banky W, you know Banky W, right? Banky W was talking about how um, Pastor Taiwo Dukoya looked at him about more than 15 years ago and said, you are going to, your gift is not just in the choir. You're going to have a voice in the nations. God is going to use you. I mean, they were in a night vigil and the man prophesied and everything he's living now is based on that prophecy. Has he left the church? Yes. Is he now that? Is he living it? Yes. Prophecies. Kennedy again prophesied about the charismatic revival and renewal, about the gift of the healing, about gift of healing, power, move, and all of these things. Yes! Before it happened. Prophecies. Listen, not all prophecies will also be good. Very uncomfortable truth, but we we'll have to get there. Not all prophecies will be good. You know, we are sweet by and by Christians. So when I say somebody said your this will happen, uh, you will lose your job. Ah, I see you losing your job. See? Kapo Shakai, the other. Few people they have come. Now, now, it is not every prophecy that says that that is evil. Sometimes you'll lose your job because the Lord is preparing you for a greater one. So it is not, and it is not every prophecy that you don't like that you can pray it away. When prophecies reveal unwanted scenarios or ending, it is not every time that we can change it in the place of prayers. It's simply telling us, get ready. Get ready. That will happen, get ready. You remember Egypt, Joseph, and the dream? There were no amount of prayers could have stopped the seven years of plenty and then the seven years of lack. But what they did through prayers was that they prepared. Preparation. It helps you. It helps you. You know, in Acts 21 verse 4, 
Give me Acts 21 verse 4. I want to show you something in the life of Paul. Acts 21 verse 4. And then we'll then read 11 to 14. And finding disciples, we stayed there seven days. Then they told Paul through the Spirit not to do what? Not to go to Jerusalem. But Baba went. You know why he went? Because the Lord had told him to go. But the reason they also told him not to go was because there's going to be affliction and there's going to be trouble for him there. So that, that they said something is going to be tough does not mean the righteous should not go there if you already know that's the will of God. Give me 11 to 14. Then you will see a prophet there. 11 to 14. When he came to us, he took Paul's bed. That's Agabus. He took Paul's bed, bound his hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns these belts and deliver him to the hands of the Gentiles. I've been read the scriptures. You've read the book of Acts. Is that not what eventually happened? Now when we add these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with this guy. Baba, no go to Jerusalem. No go. No go. Paul answered, what do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? You feel like a person person. What do you mean by breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but to also die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. So when we saw that this man could not be persuaded, what did they say? If he was our generation, you know what they would have said? It is where. <laughs> That's what we say. Brothers, it is where. Let him, it is where. Let him just go. It is where. What they were saying was, this man knew that it was going to be tough when he got there. He already had the knowing. So that they were telling him it was a confirmation. Prophecy comes to the person of the Spirit. Therefore, never takes as prophecy anything said by anyone who is not born of God. Give me 2 Kings 8, 10 to 12. I'm trying to show you that there are certain prophecies that 2 Kings 8, 10 to 12. And Elisha said to him, go say to him. Now, he's speaking to a soldier that was sent by the king. Go say to him, you, will, you shall certainly recover. Look at that prophet. Say, go say to him, you shall certainly recover. Wisdom day for prophecy sometimes. However, the Lord has shown him that he will do what? He will, it's not he will die. He will really die. You see, when the Bible put that adjective really well, it didn't say, it's not that he will die and he will be confused that he's dead. He said he will really die. It's, it means that it's confirmed in the spiritual that he's dead. He's a dead man walking. He said, he will really die. Then he set his countenance in his tear until he was ashamed and the man of God began to weep. And Azael said, why is my Lord weeping? He answered, because I know the evil that you will do it to the children of Israel. There are strong ghosts you will set on fire and young men you will kill with the sword and you will dash their children and rip open their women with child. This was him telling Azael what's going to happen. It wasn't going to be changed, right? That boy, he, he was not even going to say it. It was not pleasant to say. He was almost embarrassed and he, he was weeping. They said, why are you weeping? He said, because of that which the Lord has decided he was going to do. Now, let me say this to us, and this is very key for us. I remember a young man came to me one time and told me and said, his brother, his uncle who was not in Nigeria, you know, when people have uncles who are not in Nigeria and those uncles are sick, they don't want them to die. Am I, are you following what I'm saying? Because iPhone can come home with him sometimes. You understand? Samsung can come home and then dollars can come, pounds can come and all of that. So he came to me and said, ah, my uncle is sick. My uncle is very sick. Please pray. And I just looked, and my face was as a stare. It was like I was weeping. Because I knew that he was going to die. So, but it's not, you see, when you hear that somebody's going to die, it's not that you're not saying, ah, oh my cool, he's going to die, he's going to die. So they can say you are a prophet, you are a prophet. No, there are ways to, you just calm down. I didn't want to say, 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 sir, say it. What is wrong? Say it, say, sir, ah, say it. Just say it like that, just say, say, ah, he's going to die. And then I forgot about it and left. Then he came to my house one day. He said, Otikuma and Tikusha, money, I didn't kill him. <laughs> I didn't totally forgot him. That I promised that I said that. It was, I, that's not like a prophecy. I only saw into the future. I didn't kill him. I just saw that what, what the Bible says, he was really dead. Do you understand? And that's what I saw. Praise God. So what's a good place to start? Number one, God's first and primary way of... I want to say three things to us, and that's very key. I think in your, in your slide you only have two, but let me say three things to us, and that's very key. Number one, 
God's first and primary way of operation is to talk to you about a matter. God's first and primary way of operation is to talk to you about a matter. God is not a gossip. He doesn't speak to second party about you without a cause. You are the first person he's going to speak to. So have that at the back of your mind, right? So he's not going to reveal to somebody what has to do with you. He's going to, first of all, talk to you. Number two, if God is speaking to someone about you, it's actually based on two things. Or three things. Number one, is confirming what he has told you to assure you that he's the one saying it. Right? So if the Lord speaks concerning Wumi to delight, praise God, and delight is telling Wumi, is confirming what Wumi already knows, or that God has already told Wumi, or God is trying to tell Wumi, but Wumi cannot hear. So God tells delight to tell Wumi. So the first way God operates is to tell delight. That's the first operation of God, to tell Wumi. But if Wumi cannot hear, God tells somebody to tell her. So that's the first reason why he tells other person. The second reason is that he tells the light also because he has told Wumi, Wumi has received it, but Wumi keeps doubting it. Is that God talking to me on my mind? So when you receive it from the other person, it becomes what? A confirmation. So God speaks to somebody else concerning us as a means of confirmation. And then number three, why is it that how does he speak? Why does he talk to other people? The message is passing across to us has to do with not only us, but with other people also. That's number three. I said it's not there. Right? This, this was what he just told me. Updated information you get. I talk to people because it has to do with not only you, but me also. For instance, if the Lord is telling you that that is your, that is your husband, it does not make sense to keep it at you alone. If he doesn't tell him, he's not going to come. That's what I'm saying. So the Lord tells him because it has to do with two of us. Right? So if a group is praying for a thing, the Lord will tell other people in that group or other people in that family because it has to do with all of them. That's why the Lord tells other people because that thing is not for them alone. Do we get that? And then number three, that you prophesy does not make you a prophet. I need to say that to many of us, especially New Testament believers, right? That you are prophesied and it happened. Ah, that man told me, God told me to tell that man. And I told him, and exactly what I said, I was going to get a job, he got a job. And so you change your name to prophet Ezekiah Walker. You know, there's a way it sounds when you put it. You really even find people called prophesy Adeni these days. You need to find like a tush name in front of it. Like Prophet Anthony Hadeni. Just P A A, Prophet A A. You see, and when people see that, they say, ah, oh, that's, that's, that man is powerful. Do you see what I'm saying? So, the prophecy, what you prophesy, does not mean that the Lord has now called you into the fivefold ministry. You can prophesy, it doesn't make you a prophet. A prophet is someone who operates in that office of a prophet. That person is designated as a calling of God upon his life, right? We are all believers. We are all not called into ministry. But for you to be called a prophet, there is a calling. Nobody takes this honor upon himself except he that is called like Aaron was called. Many people get into trouble by wearing cloaks and mantles that the Lord did not put on them, right? So don't call yourself a prophet when you are not. Don't call yourself an apostle when you are not. Don't call yourself an evangelist when you are just a brother. Don't get into trouble by carrying cloaks that are not for you. The simple gift of prophecy stays with exhortation, uh, comfort, and edification. Uh, and that's very true. Yeah, so, so let's round up here by just, let me share with you very quickly, biblical truth about prophecy. Biblical truth about prophecy. Um, prophecies. Pri- biblical truth uh, about prophecies. And then we'll be good to go. Number one. Time is the test of every prophecy. Time. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 22. If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. You see that? You see that in your Bible? When that thing did not come to pass, it means the Lord has not spoken to that man. That prophet has spoken presumptuously, so do not be alarmed. That's exactly what John Piper did. When they gave him that testimony, (laughs) <laughs> that prophecy that his wife was going to die in childbirth, he was not alarmed. 
because he knew that that person spoke presumptuously. I remember many years ago, somebody came to me in the city of Valorant and said they saw me. I was fighting very furiously with Reverend George at the way. He said, I fought! When it was done, I said, it will not happen. It can never happen. And it has never happened. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so there are things they say. Bible says, just know that they have spoken what? Presumptuously. The Lord showed you a vision. And that vision has not come to pass. Somebody now came and met you and said he saw a vision that you died. That one don't need to get home. No alarm. Nothing. He has spoken what? Presumptuously. Tell him I will send you Christmas card 2024. To prove to you, or maybe I'll send you 5 kg of rice that you can cook and eat. So that you can see where. Number two, prophecies are given sometimes to instruct a group or a person what to do. According to the scriptures, prophecies are a source of guidance and they are instructional. Israel was led by prophets and prophecies. By them, they knew what to do. Even we were instructed by prophecies. Give me Hosea 12 and then verse 13. Hosea 12 verse 13. Prophecies are very key. Bible says, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet... It was preserved. It was preserved. Silent times of preservation is you listening to your prophet. Let me say this to you. I shared this on my status um, yesterday, and, and it's very key. Can I say to some of us that sometimes the reason you do not share what God told you with somebody else is because of your pride and arrogance. It's not because I, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I know all things. No, it's pride. If you are sure, you would share it. So the Lord told you that is your wife. You now went and told that girl and said, marry me, but don't tell pastor. You see that kind of, um, that kind of offside match. You now went and told pastor, that will not end well. I don't have to curse. I know it won't end well. Because if your heart was pure, you will not do that. It's, you see, that the Lord has said it means that you will go the right way. No manipulation. You don't manipulate prophecy. You don't. You just say the way it is. The Lord will do it. He doesn't need your help to do it. He will bring it to pass. So that you are not afraid to test. Number three, we must learn to test all prophecy. First John 4 verse 1. Any prophecy or word that doesn't agree with your spirit, discard it. What did I say? Discard it. It is not every document they give you that you kept. Some you have torn. There are some things that people tell you if it does not register in your spirit, discard it. Discard it. Are you following what I'm saying? If every woman will marry the person that came today and said, God said, women would have married like seven, seven men now. You know, we talk about polygamy. How do you call women that marry seven wives, seven husbands? Eh? Call it again. You know what it means, Emma Balo. You understand what I'm saying now? So, so the, the essence of what we are saying is that somebody is even asking that, what did they call it? It's okay. That's why I didn't call it so that you will know it. Go and read this in the book. I don't know. So, so the most important thing is, is this. Excuse me. If God said it, if he doesn't agree with me, you can keep asking me out for 20 years. You will just be old before you get married. If I'm not told, I will discard it. Are you following what I'm saying? So that you bamboozle people. The Lord showed me in the dream, me in the vision of the night. The Lord did this. Uh, hello. If what they said does not agree with you, discard it. And let me advise people who said God said that they are in a relationship. And that relationship is not working. You are fighting each other every day. Excuse me. Leave that thing. Understand that. The Lord said it is a foundation for you to get married. But when you try it in courtship, it's not working. Leave each other. If not, you will kill each other inside marriage. You have not married. You have said time beating each other. Somebody said, you know, uh, it's going to work. And you fight every day. When you're not John Cena, you fight every day. What are we doing? Say, yeah, we you know when we get married, we're just going to be in love. Everything's just going to join. It's relationship. It's distance that's the problem. Everything is going to join. Excuse me, it's going to be worse. At that time, you will complain about everything. Even when you wear bomb shorts, you will complain. When you wear wrapper, you will complain. You complain about everything. 
Everything. And you know what I just said is not prophetic. It's just simple wisdom. Amen. Test prophecy. First John chapter 4 verse 1. Beloved, do not believe what? Come and speak to me. Do not believe what? The Lord said, he said, do not believe. Is that in scripture? He said, but test the spirit. Whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone into the world. Since the time of John, they have been there. Now they are even more. See, he's a false prophet. That's not news. That's why you should be trained in the word of truth so that you don't fall victim for that. You saw, have you gone to the market before and see how bad some peppers are? How terrible they look? And you wonder why they keep selling these things? They keep selling it because there are people who buy them. If they don't buy them, they will not sell them. So if people don't consult false prophets, they would have packed up. They are there because some people need them. Some people like people lying to them. Pastor, I'm 30, I'm not married. Something is wrong with me. And I can say nothing is wrong with you. I pray, I say, don't worry, your time will come. Say, mm, in can she me say, there is a pattern in our family life. It's gonna come. So I leave you, but you will go because that is your belief. You will find a man who say, ah, hey, hey, hey. Thank God you came. If you had stayed in five more months, you could have even died. Hey, what I saw. Ah, hey, ma kabashi yata. And you know, these days they have even stopped most of the drama. You know what you know is the drama that they just did now. These days, very coded boys. They even have email address, they have telegram, they, they, they're very coded boys. Just tell you, oh, is that a problem? I've seen to you, I've seen to you. What the Lord said is this, is this, is this. Do it and then that's it. But you have to pray seven days and then you will come and say the prophet and then I pray for you. And um, that's it. A woman told me how much it took her. Huh? To see a prophet. They take form. 7,000 naira, 15,000 to see prophets. These are true life stories. Because you are not a victim does not mean it's not true. In this city, take form. And you go and transfer. If you don't have money, there's POS. To the prophet's account. You know, somebody will say it's a spiritual transaction, you must pay for it. Be careful. But because there are fake prophets and prophet does not mean there's no genuine ones. I believe that prophetic is so important in the agenda of Christ for his body. And that's why it is always attacked. This is because the office of the prophet is so important. Why is it important? Number one, they have access to the secret of God. Prophets see into the spirit world. They see. They see. It's not, they see. It's not, this is not being so. They see. I know people who prophesy. I know. They walk in the prophetic and I ask them, ah! Me, I hear, I know. How do you people see? Say they bring you, you see. Ah, they see. They see. If you are not there, you are not there. They see. So don't be, as you say, what we don't understand, we kind of always try to say it's not okay. It's not okay. That's why you don't like doctors, because you don't understand that they will open you up and say, and then they do it and close you back. And you say, ah, he's, but the reason you respect them is because you get better. You got better. Is that not so? Uh, so let, let's be careful of the prophetic. It's, it's actually very real. I don't want to give the example I want to give before. All right, number four. The purpose of Christian prophecy is stated in 1 Corinthians 14 and then verse 3, which is to edify, to exalt, and then to comfort. All right, I want to move very fast here. Number five, prophecy, according to scripture, sometimes confirm what we already know. So prophecy does not always have to be new. Just what I'm saying. It doesn't always have to be new. I see the Lord told me to tell you that you're getting married soon. Praise God. You already know that. So why not rejoice? You don't have to always say, yeah, <laughs> any, anybody could guess that. Anybody could guess that. What the Lord is saying to you is that he's assuring you that I'm with you. You know, we have become a people who say, how can they come? I say, there's somebody here. In a church of 1,000 people, you say, there's somebody here, you have a dick. How will somebody not have a dick in that church? There's somebody with 1,000 people. And then we use all those psychology to attack the prophetic. But the teacher is teaching you John 3, 6, 9, you're knocking it like, John 3, 6, 9, you have blessed from You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? It's because we are not just interested in giving them a chance. 
your sister will give you a word of prophecy. Honor it. Honor it. It doesn't have to come from the pulpit. It can come from your friend. Somebody can just send you a message on a random basis. I was praying this morning and the Lord said to tell you, honor that. Honor that. Sometimes prophecies can be changed via prayers. Sometimes. It doesn't mean that the prophet is fake or false or that the prophecy has failed. It simply means that the Lord is working things out in another way. In another way. In, Psalm, in Exodus 32 verse 14, God was going to destroy Israel. But Moses prayed and the Lord left them alone. Right? The Lord left them. So four prophecies are in force. They were not just what we call fixed will of God. That means they were fluid or malleable will of the Father. That means the Lord could still change his mind. Meaning that this revealed will can be subjected. You see, certain times prophecies can be subjected to certain higher forces. Certain higher forces. And I'll explain that to you in scriptures. So I can prophesy to your life and then and I say the Lord has said, you become the governor of the state. And then you die, remember, and you never became a governor. And then it's a false prophecy. No. At certain times, there are what we call higher forces. You can prophesy, and the Lord has revealed the future that a man is going to die. And eventually, the man did not die. Like it happened as it concerned Isaiah. And as it concerns the king, uh, Ezekiah. Isaiah went to Ezekiah and said, put your house in order because you are going to die. And the man prayed. And the Lord, before the man even got back, the prophet came back and said, the Lord has added 15 years to your years. Right? So that that prophecy was not false, but it was subject to the higher force, and it was the higher force of mercy. The man prayed. He said, remember. That means he appealed to the force of mercy. Certain times when you appeal to the force of mercy, God's mind can be changed as it concerns what you want to do. Another force that you can appeal to is the force of grace. Right? So that grace is the person of the Christ. Uh, somebody says something, you say, I remember what Jesus did on the cross. Father, that is not my portion. And that's exactly... But another thing that is also subject to is, the, is subject to the judgment of God. We don't like to hear it, but God is a God of justice. Yes, he's a God of grace, but he's also a God of justice. Is somebody listening? So they keep correcting you, they keep telling you, you say, ah, grace, now you keep sleeping with women. Grace, now you keep sleeping with women. Grace, you keep sleeping with women. I say, you have the call of God. But instead of you to do anything about the call of God, even as you are doing the call, you are slaughtering girls on the altar of your bed. Hallelujah. And they say, ah, I say, no, I don't you know, I'll show you a higher level of grace, of this, of that, of shame. And then you keep sharing, I'm a couple, a legay, a whom, and then you pray in tongues, and then you are destroying the life of people. Praise God. So one day the justice of the Lord will come. And why would he come? Because God wants to preserve those ladies and those guys. He loves them just like he loves you, right? So he will just take you out of the way. Praise the Lord. So that they can find a proper shepherd for them who will not be sleeping and destroying their womb. Is somebody following what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying now? Did the Lord not call that brother? He did. But how is it that he did not attain and fulfill his call? His acts. You see what I'm saying? Higher justice. Those are the forces that can cause things. So that, that I prophesy that you'll be a billionaire. And every time the Lord brings money, you'll finish it. Say, ah, what they have said it. More money will keep coming. We are billionaires. More money will keep coming. <laughs> it is not thousand, hundred of thousand that we are all wasting. Don't worry. When the real billion come, you will know me. Amen. God will not send you the billion. You will die. And you will say, I am a faith prophet. For the Lord will appear to you on the throne room as he enters in and say to you, you are a stupid person. Praise God. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So you've got to understand how these things work. There are principles that ensure that these things work. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so that's very key and very important. Uh, the kingdom, remember, was taken from Saul. And, and this, this verse of scripture is very important. 1 Samuel chapter 13. Uh, many times we miss out on this. 1 Samuel 13, and let's read 13 to 14. I want to show you something. 1 Samuel 13. Look at that. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You no, know, I told you that he would say stupid. May, I'm sorry, maybe I should have said foolish, because that's what scripture says. Look at that. He said, uh, you have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. You see, when you see but after the statement, you see now, you see, but now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man. So how is the Lord planning a coup for Saul when Saul was still anointed as king? 
It was because of Saul, not because of God. If Saul had stayed in his place, he would not have sought for himself a man. So that the prophecies over your life, you can help those prophecies to become fulfilled or you can help to destroy those prophecies. The greatest thing you can do for prophecy is to take responsibility for it. The Lord has called you, take responsibility for the call. Number seven, prophecy should exalt the spirit of Christ and align with the details of scriptures. And that's, I think that's simple. I think I've said that before. Number eight, I want to run now. Prophecy should not always be about negativity. You know one of the reasons you, you don't like those spirit churches? You know why? Every of their prophecies is always bad. They never see that somebody's going to get a job or something. It's always a eh, shorter, eh, be careful for this, don't travel, don't go this. And if you don't know what we are talking about, thank God for your prayers. When you get home, go and greet them specifically and say thank you for not taking me to some churches. Praise God. I, I say correlations to you if you don't know what we are talking about because you've been in a Bible-believing church and that's awesome. Right? Um, the word of God is good news. Prophecy should not always be negative. If you have somebody that every time the person talks to you, he's saying he see negative things. Every time. Cut the person off for your own destiny and future. Right? Uh, every time he chats you up, he say, mm, mm, I saw something this morning. And I saw, he's always seen something. And everything he sees, he never sees good. He's always seeing negativity. Then be careful. I was once in a church where all the prophecy was about negativity. And a lot of evil was prophesied. I mean, people would sit down and then they would start prophesying. And when the first person has used 15 minutes out of our time, the next person will now begin his own. And use another 10 minutes. As the person is saying, hele, 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 a mule, and somebody will now begin his own. And then he continues like that. You know, sometimes we start church around 9, and then we are there till like 3, 4 p.m. Praise God. Your prophecies have taken like 2, 3 hours. They just take time. And then it's, it's, it's so amazing that in 8 hours of service, we did not even hear some of 20 minutes. Because after each prophecy, we now pray. As we are praying and we are thinking, ah, the Lord is about to finish with us today. Somebody else would be, enter the spirit. <laughs> and, then, and then, we always leave service very angry. Very angry and hungry. Praise God. They only show up food in the afternoon those days. When you get home, the first thing, it's not who wait for cooking rice. It's Gary. First of all, must soak something inside. Like, oh, you are angry, you are hungry. It's been a lot. I mean, people say... Uh, you know, AC here can make life very comfortable. I mean, how do we do it? I don't understand. On wooden chairs, sitting for eight hours. And we do it. Uh, we do it praising God. Amen. And then finally, prophecies reveal the hidden or secret things as it concerns a matter. And that's why you must be very interested in prophecies. Because there are things about your life that are hidden. There are things, there are matters that you will not understand how you are going to get through or get out of it. Uh, by prophecy, it will just come. Because the prophetic is actually also a very powerful thing. That when they release certain words into your life, uh, it can make certain things to begin compel. Uh, compel certain things to begin to work together for your good. I remember there was a time I was stagnant in ministry. And I went to a man and the man said to me, he said this to me. And what he said exactly was what eventually happened. But the word he released uh, ensured that everything he said came to pass. So, at certain times, you need a word of prophecy to actually push you forward. The word of prophecy also pushes us forward in the path of God for our lives. So that as it is released, the thing to do when prophecy comes is to celebrate it, to rejoice at it, and to declare, yes, that is me. In conclusion, we'll finish our series on divine leading. And in conclusion, I have five things I want to say. And I'll just say it and then I'm gone. Number one, that while God leads his people... It determines the method by which he communicates his will to them, right? Therefore, we should only trust him for leading and allowing him to lead us. Why God leads his people, it determines the method by which he communicates that leading to them, right? So, the Lord will lead you to a dream. The Lord will lead you to an inner witness. You can't begin to say, God, I, you know, marriage is a big thing. You can't just be inner witness. So I must see dream and vision. Marriage is very hard. See people with marriage are broken left, right, and center on TikTok, on Instagram, and the Lord is asking you, am I on TikTok, am I on Instagram? I say no, but you know what is going on there. So I, I need to see a vision, whether that man is for me. Because it doesn't even meet my spec. It's big, it's rotunda, 
He speaks in tongues in a very uh, thing that makes me very afraid. You know, there are tongues that make people afraid. Just wake up in the morning, just say, Ganu Maya, Hosea, 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 Moku, since this is what I'm going to be living with. So you, you are not saying it's not spiritual. I say, I'm afraid of that guy. Praise God. If somebody's tongue can be that fearful, if it manifests the flesh, how fearful will it be? Amen. And the Lord is saying, you know, that's, that's simply just your, your person, right? So you can't tell the Lord, show me a vision, show me a dream. Uh, just tell me again. No, you can't do that. Number two, if God does not communicate with you any other way, stick to the word of God, right? It will always lead us primarily through the word as the primary source of divine guidance right so you don't have a vision you don't have a dream stick with the word stay with the word the word is a valid means of being led by god stay with the word number three when a child of god seeks to know the voice of god god will lead that person into his perfect will god is not hiding his will from you god is interested in you knowing his will and that's number three in summary what am i saying number four the lord leads uh, uh, and he certainly leads so there's no need to cast lots how many of us have casted lot before to know what god is saying be, be, be don't lie in church don't lie in church don't raise it like this that's that. raise it very well raise it very well right i've casted lot i say mini mini mommy oh mommy i say donkey monkey wow yeah. that's it that's it a coco is not lagos it's not Lagos. <laughs> you say mini mini. You just do it again. Mini mini mini. I told you about the fleece the guy did, right? That he put a fleece out and the cotton became wet. And then he did it again. Say, Lord, if it is, let me be dry. And this time it was wet again. Say, ah, well, that day. Right? So you don't even know what to do again because you are confused. Let me say this to you. The Lord will lead you via his voice. You do not need to um, put a fleece out. The inner voice is there. The dreams are there. Visions are there. And the Lord will lead you. Number five. The Lord leads, no need to cast lots and to set free. I think I've said that, right? I've told you. Yeah, the Holy Spirit, number four, I think I skipped that. The Holy Spirit is the author of divine guidance. Whatever you think you have received of God, the Spirit must bear witness to you that it is genuine, right? If the Lord says Uti is your husband, you should not see Uti and your heart is breaking. Ha, 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 ha. If that's what's happening to you, it might not actually also be God. It might be also because you are afraid of marriage. Somebody say, he asked me as I lost my peace. If the problem is not the man sometimes, the problem is your experience. You have seen your father slap your mother. And you know that kind of slap. Pah! The woman turned like this. You see that kind of... And so you are afraid and you lost your peace because you are about to make the same commitment. And so naturally fear would come. That is that God is now... You have a, somebody say, I've lost my peace. That's why I tell people peace is not a true judge. Of whether you should make a decision or, or not peace tells you there is a problem you need to solve sometimes the problem is not the other party sometimes you have the problem the fear of tomorrow can be a problem they ask you go to lagos or go on to start a job or start a company and you've seen your father start businesses and all of them fail and the lord is asking you to resign and go and start a business and you are saying if the, somebody will even start a business is it going to be in this, in this era? In this era? Lord, help me. Lord, and then you lost your peace. Why you lost your peace is nothing about God. It's everything about your fears. So I, actually, you need to be careful. And, all of that. and that's our journey as it concerns um, divine guidance. Next week, we're going to look at the power of the Spirit. Um, I want to do an impartation and a prophetic service to pray for some of us so that our ears can be opened. Right, so when you're coming to church next week, it's going to be a full flow of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, amen. If you have eye ill, wear eye ill, but have a sleepers underneath you, praise God, because the wings of God will take you and put you where the Lord wants you to be. Bow down your head, bow down your heart, and I want you to begin to speak to the Father and begin to talk to God and say, God. I, I, I've heard, I've been taught how you lead. Can somebody ask the Lord genuinely for divine guidance? Can somebody say, Lord, lead me? I, I, I subject my assistance to your leading. I subject my assistance to your leading. If you will not lead me, I will not go. I subject my assistance to your leading. Your leading alone, oh God. I, I put myself under divine guidance. If you, whatever you lead, I'll go. If you do not lead, I will not go. Lead me, God. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Divine guidance, O oh God.
divine guidance. Oh God, Father, thank you. Because the word you've given, I've shared with your people. Thank you, Father, because you are good, you are God. Lead your people, direct them, oh God. Thank you, Father. Amplify your voice in the hearings of your people. I pray, oh God, that they have ears that hear and eyes that see. Their mind receive and perceive even instructions from you. Thank you because it's a new day for them and their family. We worship and we exalt you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen.